Now what other hope would you have? That He would move because you're good. That He would move because you're worthy. That He would answer because you're deserving. If you have to appeal to any of those things, you'll never have an answered prayer. You appeal to His mercy. To His mercy. Manifest Thy mercy, O God, by moving on behalf of this undeserving child. The woman who came to Jesus with the, the demon-possessed child. I think it's very important. She doesn't say, have mercy on my child. Have mercy on me and heal my child. Have pity on me as a parent. Heal my child. Charles Leiter points out, I know this is running a rabbit, but I think it's beautiful that for those who have lost children, mine are yet unconverted, that they're so small, but a parent who is a child of God can cry out, have mercy on me as your child and save my children. I think that's wonderful. He says, to that we may appeal and on that we may rely. There's, if, if you have to appeal, if I have to appeal to my own piety, I have nothing to rely on. I have no confidence whatsoever that God would ever move on my behalf. I would always be questioning my piety, wondering, is it good enough? And if I had any sense at all, I would always answer no. But if I can appeal to His mercy, can appeal to Him, then I have a sure foundation. When that is urged as an argument for our salvation, and when that is the sole ground of our confidence, we may be assured that He is ready to hear and to save us. When His goodness is the sole ground of our confidence. When we're evangelizing people, what is one of the, the most important endeavors that we have? To speak with people and hope that the Spirit will move so that they'll no longer trust in themselves. In their good works. We tell them, there's no ground for confidence in your own piety. There's no ground for confidence in your good works. You must quit all of that and hope solely in the mercies of God. Well, that's correct. But the Christian life is continuing on in that. Continuing on in that. But we kind of have a problem with the Galatian her heresy at times. Beginning by faith, do we go back to works? Are we sanctified by works? Do we gain position by works? Absolutely not. It's faith from beginning to end. And it can only be faith from beginning to end if it is mercy and grace from beginning to end. It goes on. From the beginning of the world, from the time when man apostatized from God, through all dispensations and in all ages and lands, the only hope of men for salvation has been the fact that God is a merciful being. That's missions right there. That's missions. You're out to do something. It's a wonderful task. Convince men that God is merciful. But the problem is convincing men that they are in need of mercy. And that is where the preacher does the knife work. Surgery. With all his might, exposing the rotten flesh, the proud flesh, 
lying under what may seem like beautiful skin so that men will cry out for the mercy of God. The true ground of successful appeal to Him has been, is, and ever will be that His own name might be glorified and honored in the salvation of lost and ruined sinners in the displays of His mercy. Save them. Save me. Why? That your mercy might be displayed. Can't you think of another reason? Not in myself. Not in myself. Our only hope is twofold. That God is merciful and that God desire to manifest that mercy. Okay? Very important truth. Okay, let's go on. Now we're going to go to the New Testament for a moment. Let's go to Romans. Chapter 5. Verses 6 through 10. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through Him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Now, there's a whole lot there. A whole lot. We could, I guess we could spend months easily in these passages. But in order to prove a point that God saves for the sake of His mercy, because of His love, His character. We're going to look at some of the names that are used to describe men. And in these names, these horrid, terrible names, it will be proved to us that we are saved because of the mercy of God. Now before we get started, again, why would anyone want to walk up to another person and say, you're helpless, you're ungodly, you're a sinner, and the worst, you're an enemy of God? Why would we do that to someone? I mean, why wouldn't we take the more popular approach of building up people's self-esteem? And showing them all the reasons why they should be in love with themselves. Because there's no mercy of God in that. By showing men reality. By allowing them to see the pit. Of their heart. Then the mercy and the grace of God. Becomes a great thing in their life. In their life. Now first of all he uses the term helpless comes from a Greek word which means weak, feeble, or without strength. In light of the verses which follow, the meaning is not only that man was completely destitute of any virtue or power to save himself, but there was nothing in man which could move a holy and righteous God to save him. Simply no strength. Sometimes in a race, someone will fall to the side. Coach will encourage them to get back up. I, re I remember running cross country in this uh, in a kind of central Illinois one time on a golf course, and everything was a hill. I mean, it just seemed hills everywhere, and you would see guys 
be running in front of you and gradually start to waver and then kind of just go off the path and fall down. Coach, get up, get up. I can't go on, coach. No, I just don't have any strength. There's nothing left in me. One of the things that God will do in the life of a lost man, He, 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 he regenerates the heart. He has to do supernatural things for that man to be saved, but many times God will use practical means to do that. To bring the man to certain points. He will allow a man to wear himself out. He will allow a person pharisaical and believing that somehow they can save themselves by their own means. He will allow